today, the top ranked Gamecocks come in, winners of 23 in a row. They've won 20 straight SEC regular season wins. The last team to beat them during the regular season, the Missouri Tigers, they're in the building as we say hello and welcome you courtside along with the former Lady Vol, Andrea Carter. I'm Tiffany Green. Well, 371 days ago, Missouri pulled off that historic upset. However, when you look at the South Carolina team, you know that it starts right there in the middle with Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, Aaliyah Boston is everything to this South Carolina team. You mentioned them being upset last season. Keep in mind, they went on to win the national championship after that, and Aaliyah Boston is a key factor and has been throughout her entire career. She's coming off of 21 points last time out against Kentucky on 9 of 11 from the field. It's her efficiency. It's her poise that she plays with. You see her accolades. They speak for themselves. What you don't see as in a specific accolade is the triple teams, the quadruple teams, and the attention that the defense gives Aaliyah Boston day in and day out. She handles it well. The reigning national player of the year in South Carolina. A perfect 17-0 on the season there in the white jerseys, the gray jerseys for the visiting Missouri Tigers. And the tip is controlled by the Gamecocks. Coming off that win on the road against Kentucky. And Boston already getting a lot of attention. Victoria Saxton along the baseline, that 15-foot jumper falls. With the visiting Tigers, 14 and 4 on the season. Their starting five includes a couple of Haley's, Troop and Frank, along with Jayla Kelly, Lauren Hansen, and Mama Dembele, who has the ball in her hands, running the point for Mizzou. Haley Troop looking to knock down the triple and does so. Troop coming off a six point performance. They'll need some more of that from her. Zaya Cook, who has been pacing the way for this South Carolina team. For all the attention that you mentioned, Aaliyah Boston gets. Zaya Cook is helping to lead the scoring party with 15 a game for South Kakalaki. And you can tell even right now, all of the Missouri players inside the paint, but those shots, the mid-range shot from Victoria Saxon, the mid-range shot from Zaya Cook, the ability to have confidence and step into those shots and knock them down is huge when defenses are packing it in the paint. Cook registers her first two points of the ball game, a one-point lead for South Carolina early on. Warren Hansen, who has been very solid for Robin Pinchton's team, and back-to-back -back threes and possessions for Mizzou. They have the lead. And back-to-back -back threes off of screening action. The first three for Troop was an off-ball screen. The second one was an on-ball screen. South Carolina defending the screens. Got to be aggressive. They want to always shadow Aaliyah Boston, but they left her open there just past the free throw line, and she knocks it down, rims it around, even at six. Missouri trying to bounce back after back-to-back -back losses in SCC play, the last one coming against LSU. Dawn Staley in her 15th season as the head coach of this South Carolina program, the reigning national champions from a season ago. We've talked so much throughout the year about how dominant they've been. You see the two wins, fewer than 10 points, and everything outside of that, they have been pouring on points. It's been remarkable the way South Carolina has been able to win games, and it takes a full 40 minutes. That what, that's what teams don't understand. You hang in for one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. You have to play all four quarters. Well, at the end there, just splitting through and getting the pass to Jayla Kelly. And they were trying to make them worth the full 30 seconds on that shot clock, but it was Missouri who netted a basket. Boston face up to Kelly and just bounces off the front iron and over the top. Dunk. Dawn Staley talked to us about her team has to be ready to defend for a full 30 seconds. Missouri very methodical on the offensive end. Very disciplined for Missouri on the defensive end as well. You see how they are committed to packing in the paint. Traveling violation going against Victoria Saxton. They hand it back over to Mizzou. And this is what Missouri does on the offensive end. You watch Jayla Kelly calling for the ball screen. Haley Troop attacking it, drawing the defense, attracting two, 
perfect pocket pass, leading Kelly to the rim. That's something that Haley Troop and Mama Dembele did really well last season against South Carolina. There's not a stat for it. I think there should be. But the ability to draw two defenders and then create. Dembele, who's working on Kira Fletcher, pulls it back out. And Haley Troop looking for somewhere to go. Jayla Kelly with a spin move and a traveling violation called against the junior. The Kelly, who started the first eight games of the season, slowed by some injuries, missed a few, but worked her way back into the lineup. Fletcher, the new face for the starting five for South Carolina, grad transfer coming over from Georgia Tech, swings it over across court to Zaya Cook, the good three-point look, but second chance opportunity and one for Aaliyah Boston. And this is what makes Aaliyah Boston great. It is the relentlessness that with she works. She spins to try and get a lob pass and is in perfect position for the offensive rebound, right? So right there, she could get the lob pass as she's spinning on Jayla Kelly, lead it right to the basket. Zaya Cooks takes the shot instead, and Aaliyah Boston's able to put it right up and in. Well, that's the part that's made South Carolina so effective on the offensive end, their ability to get O boards and be able to get those second chance opportunities. A 9-8 advantage early on. Good crowd inside Colonial Life Arena on this Sunday afternoon. Haley Troop coming off the screen and knocks it down, and that's what she does. She can knock down that triple, and they want to get her going. She only had three points, just a season low on Thursday. Yeah, Haley Frank is a player that has worked on creating her own shot. She has put the time in, but it is a lot harder in the SEC. Missouri wants to set her up to knock down those step-in three-point shots. And Kiara Fletcher with another mid-range jump shot. South Carolina, such a dangerous team when they are knocking down that mid-range shot. Both teams shooting the ball well. Missouri, four or five from the field. 71% on the other side for South Carolina. Dembele trying to take it in again, finding Kelly in too many steps. And a Missouri turnover, ball security, something that Robin Pinchton talked to us about and how important it was for her group. You think about the longevity of the coaches on each of these teams. Robin Pinchton, 13 seasons in Columbia, Missouri with the Tigers. We mentioned how strong they start out SEC play, three wins in a row and since then has dropped back-to-back -back games. But lots that they can learn from it. And Lauren Hansen, who had 22 points, a team high. She has been playing outstanding so far in this SEC play for the Tigers. Frank, tough shot there for three. And here comes South Carolina. Bree Beal. Body position can't get it to fall. And two players going to the floor, and Frank and Beal on the other side. We'll tell you a little bit more about the game of Zaya Cook as my partner Drea Carter breaks down what's got him cooking this season. Zaya Cook has been outstanding for the South Carolina Gamecocks this season, and it's her decision making. Watch how much attention Aaliyah Boston gets from the defense. Leaves Zaya Cook open on the backside. And it's the decision-making to attack the top leg of the defender. So she drives baseline. Nothing comes of it. Now comes the maturity of giving the ball up. When it comes back to her, the defense overcommits. Zaya Cook attacks to her right. And the elevation of her jump shot, nine feet in the air at the highest point of her shot. Impossible to block that. When it comes to Zaya Cook's game, that play really breaks it down. The maturity, the decision-making, the confidence, also being so intentional with what she wants to do with the basketball, playing so well for South Carolina right now this season. Two-time All-American, as you mentioned, Drea's had an amazing start to SEC play. And when we had the opportunity to talk to our head coach, Dawn Staley, and said, well, what's made the difference for her this year? She's got that mental toughness, that extra mental edge that's needed to be able to take over when necessary, to bounce back when the ball isn't falling her way. She also talked about Zaya's commitment to the defensive side. And as you watch her right now, chasing Lauren Hansen around the screens, their ball screens, their off-ball screens. 
It takes a lot of energy to do that, and a commitment level that, okay, it's not only my offense, but it's my defense. But for South Carolina, you don't want to foul a three-point shooter. Lauren Hansen draws the foul. Leah Boston whistled for her first, and Hansen will go to the line and shoot three. Well, Missouri knows that Lauren Hansen is a trusty three-point shooter. And give Missouri credit on the offensive end. They have been so committed to ball screens, off ball screens, that motion offense. It's continuous, takes a lot of energy. Coach Robin Pinchon talked about how Sophie Cunningham was so great in the motion offense because she communicated and she talked and she was constantly moving. That's what the Missouri offense is built on. Indeed, and that's how you're successful when you trust the movement within the offense. Also, in that upset last year, they only had single-digit turnovers, so taking care of the basketball is also key for them. Going a little back and forth, Bree Hall didn't want it, finally takes the shot. The offensive board from Kira Fletcher resetting here with 20 seconds on the shot clock, and Fletcher coming back to get it. Something that she can do a little bit more of is be more assertive on offense. Don, Don Staley, when talking about Kiara Fletcher, said, we hand-picked you. We want you to be great, aggressive, look to score. How many chances did South Carolina get before that one finally was put back in by Aaliyah Boston? A number of good looks, four times the try and in. The relentless effort that Aaliyah Boston works with. If you're not going to get a paint touch on the pass, that's fine because she's going to get a paint touch on the offensive rebound. Think about how frustrating it has to be for defenses. You're committed to clogging the paint. You're selling out. You're really wanting South Carolina to suit jump shots. And then Aaliyah Boston comes in for a second chance point. It's deflating for defenses when you give all that effort and she's still able to get an and one finish. One of the best rebounding teams in the country. They average 17 offensive boards per game. And so they are able to rebound about 48% of their missed shots. Aaliyah Boston goes to the bench with seven early first quarter points. The defense of South Carolina on display there, just shadowing all the way was Bree Hall, hands held high. Bree Beal coming back the other way, and Raven Johnson, fresh off of a season-ending injury a year ago, and into the lineup, and a very promising player in this program. The triple goes down. Give credit to Bree Hall for the on-the-ball defense on that last possession. And then Raven Johnson, when she comes into the game, she comes in with firepower, comes in with speed, comes in with a ton of energy. Martin Dembele tries to steal it away and is able to do so. And a whistle on the play, and Dembele is called for the personal foul. What, what sparks all of this energy? Watch the defense by Bree Hall. Hands straight up, sliding. Hands straight up to get the block, and that leads to the next possession for Raven Johnson to come down and knock down a three-point shot. When you talk about this South Carolina team, Don Staley said, the one thing that we always get back to is our habits. Our habit is defense. Our habit is locking down. That is what sparks everything for the Gamecocks. When you think back to last game, this group trailed by 10 points in the second quarter to Kentucky, and it was Raven Johnson who helped come off the bench and spark a 16-0 run to help South Carolina gain the lead before going into the locker room. Off the miss, Caitlin Gilbert checking in for the first time for the Missouri Tigers. The grad transfer coming over from Notre Dame. Caitlin Gilbert has an opportunity to be really big in this matchup against South Carolina. She has the athleticism, she has the length to attack the basket, has had some double-figure performances this season. That's what she's capable of at her best. Really had that one stolen away, recovered and regained, and trooped off the mark. And South Carolina outrunning inside Camila Cardozo, the six foot seven from Brazil, kick back out. Hall can't knock it down. 
Rehal missed the shot, but that's a great find from Camilla Cardoso. All the defense is sucking in. She sees out of the corner of her eye that peripheral vision to put the pass where it needs to be. Hall falls to the floor. Here's Lauren Hansen again from downtown. Lauren Hansen with nine points, a couple of them coming from beyond the arc. Ball game tied at 17 apiece on the floor for South Carolina. Beal, Cardoso, Bree Hall, Johnson, and Ashlyn Watkin, Watkins. That one deflected by Gilbert. And here comes Lauren Hansen up the left side of the floor. Hansen waiting for the rest of her team. Jayla Kelly was calling for it the entire way. Instead, she gives it to Gilbert. And can't connect. Final minute of the opening quarter into Cardozo. Good feed, great position. Cardozo just standing tall and falling hard to the floor after trying to rally that rebound. It's already been a very physical game. That was could have been a foul on Lauren Hansen on the initial shot. Give Camilla Cardozo credit. Just like Aaliyah Boston being unfazed by the physicality, continuing to work. But just because they're unfazed or unbothered or they don't drop their head or they don't complain to the refs, it doesn't mean that it wasn't a foul. That was a foul on Lauren Hansen on the initial shot. Jayla Kelly ends up getting the foul, pursuing the basketball. Cardoso shooting two. We're coming up later this afternoon here on ESPN, the second game of this women's basketball doubleheader, the Tobacco Road rivalry between number 11 NC State and 22nd ranked North Carolina. That's at 3.30 Eastern, where Wes Moore was talking about the revenge tour that everyone's having after winning three straight ACC championships. Everyone's gunning for the Wolfpack. That's what happens when you achieve greatness for seasons and seasons and seasons. There's a target on your back. NC State feels it. South Carolina feels it with every game they play. Crowd thought there was a travel again. The great defense going all the way down and trying to run through the screen. And Bree Hall falls to the floor and she's fouled by Michael Lithcom. Bree Hall had so much energy getting up to defend Lauren Hansen. Lauren Hansen has been a sharp shooter already today. We give Bree Hall credit, physical matchup. Her activity is what was able to draw that foul. Coming up to try to get it. Johnson and the Gamecocks with five seconds to go in the quarter. Leticia Ami here pulling up along that baseline. Can't get it to go. Heaves it up. Caitlin Gilbert, it'll count if it goes. And off the mark. But wow, what an entertaining first quarter from Columbia. The top-ranked South Carolina Gamecocks up by two. Well, Missouri's Lauren Hansen decided to bring her firepower into Colonial Life Arena. And that is exactly what Lauren Hansen does. She shoots the ball with so much confidence. She's got a great release, whether it's off the dribble, whether it's off the catch. The quick release that she is able to get her shot off makes her very tough to guard. And it's taken time for Lauren Hansen to settle into this Missouri offense. Remember, she transferred in from Auburn a couple seasons ago. This Missouri offense isn't easy to adapt to. She looks completely comfortable in it this season. Well, she is one of those players that's transformed into one of those most playable critter, uh, most critical players on the roster. And just looking at that first half, a great start for Missouri, given the fact they were held to just seven points. They had a poor shooting performance in their last game. So already off to a great start and doing it against the top defense in the country. A couple of whistles blown. And Ashton Judd called for the personal foul. I love the gear that Dawn Staley continuously rocks fashion forward for sure. Giving a shout out to the Gamecock legend, Asia Wilson. 
You know what we call that for Dawn Staley, Tiff? We call it a uh, ultimate drip. <laughs> she has the ultimate drip. Leads her team. When you talk about a team that takes after their head coach, right, the poise, the confidence, everything that they run, being able to trust it, that comes from their head coach. We're seeing two incredibly great head coaches right now in terms of longevity and building culture at their universities. And that's the key word, culture, when you talk to coaches about what it takes to build a program. Don Staley knows that it's the culture of the type of players that you want to come in. They're going to work hard. They're going to be selfless. They're going to give it their all. And it's stolen away after that make from Letitia Ami here. Raven Johnson coming up with it and sprinting the floor is Zaya Cook. Oh, my. What an effort. That's the culture that has been developing since her freshman season here. And she fits right in, Zaya Cook. You said it. You teed it up. The culture. Raven Johnson ends up getting the steal off of the out of bounds. Missouri just trying to throw the ball in and Raven Johnson's effort and then the heads up play not to look to score for myself. Where are my teammates? And Zaya Cook's effort streaking down the floor, her elevation to finish. That's what South Carolina basketball is at its best. Defensive energy, elite athleticism, and finding each other for easy buckets. That one pops in and out, but no worry because Victoria Saxon is there and so is Cardoso. Both shots won't fall. A jump ball and possession arrow goes to Mizzou. And two offensive rebounds. Yep. You watch this South Carolina team and you'll, you'll see games where maybe a team hits seven threes or six threes. A team will outshoot them from the three-point line, but South Carolina will almost always outscore them in second chance points and in paint points. It's their size, it's their athleticism. It makes it so difficult to box them out and keep them off the boards. What do you think about the length of a Cardozo and then Victoria Saxton, Leticia Ami here with that wingspan. Saxton is whistled for the personal foul. South Carolina's first team foul of the quarter. Have been impressed with Missouri's offense though so far. They have been very steady in running that motion offense, running off of pin downs, running off of, they're curling off of screens, they're cutting hard. Able to get it in, Lithicum back to Dembele. Dembele driving baseline, kicks it over to Troop. Troop on the take. And she's fouled and will go to the charity strike. Letitia Ami here, the guilty party. This is what Robin Pinchton wants from Haley Troop, her looking to attack the basket. She said sometimes Haley Troop almost just exists on the floor. She's not looking to be aggressive. She's not looking to attack. Haley Troop can score the basketball. She has put up some big time performances. She just doesn't always have that mindset. You go back to a couple of games back at a season high, a career high against Arkansas, put up 24 points and she decided to be a seasoned vet that says I'm gonna come back for my sixth year because of the COVID waiver. And she not only is going to need to score more, she's got to also be more active on the defensive end, I'm sure. With the call there, let's see that one goes against South Carolina. They called it on Camilla Cardoso, I believe, trying to clear the lane for that lob pass. Lithgum going right at Cardozo, the rim protector for the Gamecocks. You think about the length of this front court for South Carolina. Quite formidable. Again, another second chance opportunity, offensive rebound. Now the eighth of this game. When you think about the tallest teams in the country. You're looking at one of them right here in South Carolina, the number one team right now in women's college basketball, better than six feet. And, and, and I also think like, hey, well, the trees over in Stanford, they're pretty tall with Cameron Absolutely. Brink and company. Absolutely. And it's, it's so much fun 
where our like where our game is across the nation, right? You see Stanford's size, and they've got size and the ability to knock down three-point shots. Ashton Prechtel comes into the game knocking down threes. Cameron Brinks added a three to her repertoire as well. And then you look at South Carolina, and they come at you in waves when it comes to their size. And with them, it's not as much the three-point shooting. It's the athleticism. Even just that drive from Letitia and me here and her strength to get through a clogged lane. She doesn't finish, but the size and the mobility of South Carolina's team is extremely impressive. And last year's SEC Player of the Year, Aaliyah Boston, who had eight points in the first quarter, is checked back into the ball game. Troop working on Boston. Over to Sarah Rose Smith again. That suffocating defense of South Carolina. Nowhere to go. Tough shot there, contested all the way. Tried to save it. And Gamecocks get it back. When we talk about mobility, just that defensive possession, Aaliyah Boston switches onto two guards and doesn't get beat. So you see here, Haley Troop, she's going to come off the screen. Leticia and me here get stuck. They switch it. That's when you want to attack and you can't get by Aaliyah Boston. And then she switches again, and then she's going to switch again later on in this play. The defensive ability. Why is she the number one draft pick, in my opinion? It's offense, it's defense, it's mobility. The way that she plays the game, extremely elite. And that is elite as well. <laughs> Zaya Cook knocking down the three-pointer. We talked about how she has been scoring the basketball so well. Well, Zaya Cook, seven points, first triple of the game, but stretching the lead out for the home team. Back here in Colonial Life Arena, 27-19 in favor of the number one team in the land, South Carolina. You see both them, LSU, Ole Miss, and Tennessee still undefeated in conference play. How about Ole Miss? We were talking about, hey, how well Coach O has not playing. When you talk about building a program and building culture and playing hard, that's an Ole Miss team that we think about them a few seasons ago. Mm -hmm. and. They just had such a hard time winning games, now starting SEC play undefeated. It's been fun to watch. Madison Scott's been balling for them. You think about you know, Angel Baker. Yeah, Angel Baker as well. And then Tennessee, how about the addition of Rakia Jackson and what she's helped to add and complement to Jordan Horston? She's been great. And Rakia Jackson coming off of the bench, been huge for Tennessee. And that's something that's very underappreciated, the bench play. That's why when we talk about South Carolina, Camilo Cardoso coming off the bench. Raven Johnson coming off the bench. You know, Raven Johnson reminds me a lot of Destiny Henderson, her freshman and sophomore year, right? Would come in with so much speed, so much defensive energy, looking to fly around and bring that. That's what Destiny Henderson brought. Ty Harris, she was more the methodical point guard, was running everything, and then Henny comes off the bench with absolute firepower. Raven Johnson reminds me a lot of that. Well, the bench has been absolutely great. Of course, Henry was a part of the national championship team that knocked off UConn last season to win the program's second, but the the depth has been expanded. And, and to your point, Drea, it's it's quickly helped to bring along this these younger players, right? And it's been beneficial in terms of minutes. The bench scoring about 40 points per game for the Gamecocks. Ten point lead for South Carolina, their largest of the ball game. Lauren Hansen, who has nine points for Missouri, knocked down a couple of three pointers. Haley Frank trying to knock down her second with the shot clock winding down and does so. And Zaya Cook and Aaliyah Boston talking as they're coming back down the court. That on the ball screen action, they've got to figure out. Zaya Cook is fighting over the top, but Aaliyah Boston is also shading. You're going to have one or the other. If Zaya Cook is going to fight over the top, Aaliyah Boston can stay on Haley Frank. Raven Johnson with a chance to answer. Too strong. Aaliyah Boston getting a hand on and a lot of contact in this one. So physical and Haley True needing to get some assistance from her teammates to get up. It has been a tough fight so far. Let me go back to this on-ball screen. Look, Zai Cook, she's going to fight over the top, but you see Aaliyah Boston coming to the side, too. No one is there 
to guard Haley Frank. So have one or the other. Either Zaya Cook stay on Haley Frank and Aaliyah Boston can take Lauren Hansen, or Zaya Cook fight over and Aaliyah Boston stay. You've got to have one or the other. Well, we said coming in that Missouri a team that can knock it down from beyond the arc, shooting 35% on the season so far has knocked down five from long range. Talked about Ashlyn Watkins. This is a great opportunity for her, getting consecutive minutes put together to show what she can do on the floor for South Carolina. Nowhere to go with that one for Lauren Hansen, caught in midair. And turned over Robin Pinchton. Going over to plead the case and say maybe that was Tip. deflected. This is why you have the ability to just switch the ball screen, which is what makes Aaliyah Boston elite. And Hansen does throw it off of Aaliyah Boston's body. So Robin Pinchton did have an argument there, but it goes with South Carolina. Seven-point advantage, trying to extend it out to 10. And Zaya Cook, oh so smooth, baby, oh so smooth and silky. Career highs in field goal percentage, career high in assist to turnover ratio, career high in confidence, career high in decision making is what we're seeing from Zaya Cook. We'll take back the other way from Caitlin Gilbert and one, but let's go back to Zaya. You can't say enough about the way she's been playing. And you see the defense committed to packing it in the lane. At times it looks like a 2-3 zone. At times it looks like just a sagging man. But either way, you knock down the shot. And this is what Caitlin Gilbert can bring for this Missouri team, the ability to attack the basket, use her length, use her athleticism, and finish at the rim. It's no easy task to finish against the strength of Bree Beal. And no easy task for Caitlin Gilbert having to juggle motherhood duties as well as being a student athlete as well. Yeah, Caitlin had her son EJ 10 months ago, has worked her way back onto the court. Coach Pinchton talked about her defensive energy being there, still working on her timing on the offensive side, but that EJ has been in the staff meetings. It's all hands on deck. Caitlin's mom moved to Columbia to help take care of EJ. And she is living out her college dreams. Coach Pinston said she is a phenomenal mother and brings a lot of maturity to the table for this team. And a fantastic teammate and just her abilities alone helping to elevate everyone around her. You said she can be an X factor and there is a good example. Absolutely, athleticism. Basketball IQ, that's a great cut and a great feed, which is what Missouri's offense is built off of. Timing, playing together, staying connected, and reading the defense. Johnson heaves it up from three, top of the key, and it falls. So South Carolina, four of nine from downtown, and Raven Johnson getting her first points of the ball game. We watched Missouri play LSU just a few days ago, and LSU hits 10 threes. Alexis Morris was absolutely on fire, but that's what makes these teams dangerous. You've got so much size and skill on the inside with Aaliyah Boston and Angel Reese, and then you add the guards being able to knock down shots. Really tough. Really tough shot for Caitlin Gilbert with the shot clock winding down, and a violation, and it goes back to South Carolina. Well, you mentioned a player like an Angel Reese. And when you had an opportunity to talk with Coach Pinchton, Pinchton this week, she, you know, you asked her about like, what are the similarities between a player like Angel Reese, who's a walking double-double, and Aaliyah Boston, who is a walking double-double, and makes such a great presence felt on the court. And the difference is, or not the difference, the similarity is their ability to dominate a game. Both players, Angel Reese and Aaliyah Boston, can dominate games. Ashley Watkins checks out of the ball game after some solid minutes logged. Cardozo comes back into the game for South Carolina. And again, that was big for Ashlyn Watkins to see that much time on the floor. 
Dawn Staley feels like she can bring more to this team, be an X factor off of the bench with her athleticism, with her IQ. She just has to have that high motor at all times. Well, Lauren Hansen fouled on the way up. The crowd not liking it at all, but Hansen, who has been aggressive in this first half, drawing that foul against Zaya Cook and Hansen with nine points and 16 minutes of play. And it, it is not easy to keep your dribble alive when you have an athletic player like Zaya Cook up under you. So give Lauren Hansen credit. As a guard perspective, that's not easy to do. That's a, where you pull it back, you retreat dribble, you pass it. It's exhausting to continue to attack the basket, to continue to look to score. That's why I didn't do it. See, it was just too tough. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm going to get so my, energy, just on, on I'm gonna get my energy on the hey, defensive look, end. Defense is what matters, right? I'm not right? doing all that <laughs> offense. It's too much. It's so you want to fit right into uh, Dawn Staley's attack and culture. Exactly. Aaliyah Boston. And that is what the national player of the year can do for you. Quick turn before the defense can get there, before the double team and triple team can come. Quick turn and finish. It was great by Aaliyah. That cut by Kelly, and that one was blocked by Cordozo. Back the other way in transition, and Zaya Cook can't finish it off. That's okay. Clean up duty. There's Aaliyah Boston. That ignites the fans inside the arena. Largest lead stretched out to 11. We'll be back in just 30 seconds. Well, Drea just mentioned the impact of a player like Leah Boston and her ability to dominate the over again. And you see, just the pass, a little give and go action. Zaya Cook with the great feed. Defense coming down, but it's just not quick enough. It's just not strong enough. If you give her a gap, she is going to find it. And look at the elevation on the pursuit of the offensive rebound. What an incredible luxury. We so show those two plays. You see her points. She's got 14 points so far on the day. But what you're not going to see on the highlights is the defensive end, her switching on to guards. What a luxury it is to have Aaliyah Boston on both ends of the floor with her productivity, efficiency, and impact. She gets a well-deserved breather as her team off their largest lead of the game and into the hands of Bree Beal. Beal, two on three action going right at Haley. Troop and in. The fearless attack of Bree Beal. The importance of a player like her on both ends of the floor. Yeah, her scoring's gone up by a little bit, but this is where she flourishes on the defensive end. Well, it's huge. She wears out opponents' best players. She wears out opponents' best scorers. For me, Bree Beal, absolutely. Look, look, just. <laughs> An invaluable member of this South Carolina Gamecock team. The connectedness of the South Carolina Gamecocks. Offensively, defensively, Raven Johnson with a beautiful find leading Bree Beal to the bucket. Four assists for Raven Johnson. We've seen Bree Beal's defensive energy. We see her putting up points. And that's the thing about Bree Beal. She lets the offense come to her. She doesn't really force shots. She finds great shots within the flow of the offense, within transition. For me, Bree Beal reminds me of Alicia Clark. That's the player that when you think about a WNBA reference and having a long career with longevity in the WNBA, look how Alicia Clark has done it. She could score in the post. She defends in an elite level. She can knock down three-point shots, which Bree Beal has a career high as far as three-point field goal percentage. And she's an impact glue player. Top notch for sure where the NFL Super Wild Card Weekend culminates tomorrow night at 8 Eastern on ABC ESPN with Dak Prescott and the Cowboys squaring off against Tom Brady and the Bucks. Our mega cast coverage also includes Peyton and Eli on ESPN2 along with ESPN Deportes Spanish language version. And boy, what an exciting weekend of football we've seen. That NFL Wild Card game between uh, Jacksonville and the LA Chargers, never out of it. Never down to, out. down 27 and finding a way to come back to win. There's the hope there for Missouri. 
as they're trying to equip this 8-0 run from South Carolina. You have an NFL team, Tiffany? Yeah, I'm, I'm a Buccaneers fan. I'm from Tampa. Are you a Bucks fan or a Tom Brady fan? I'm a Bucks fan. So if Tom I'm, Brady some, leaves, some you're long, still pulling for the Bucks. Some long, painstaking years. Okay. We were there with Vinny <laughs> Testaverde and company, and then Tony Dungy came along and helped out the calls. Well, I'm from Atlanta, and I don't want to talk about the Okay, NFL. well, you do, you're talking about comebacks and, and well, meltdowns. Okay, that's enough. Okay, okay. A little sensitive. A little bit. Okay, I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> Twenty-three wins in a row for South Carolina. They have dominated in all the areas that they've done all season long, and then you get the extra boost from the bench, and Ashlyn Watkins is able to get on the board. They just dominate in so many crucial areas, Tiffany. Look at this coming into halftime, rebounding. It's twenty-two to seven. Is is the rebounding? margin south carolina 10 points off of turnovers 18 points in the paint 12 assists they've just been connected on both ends in all areas where they're either one two or three in the country in a number of those areas 10 offensive rebounds for south carolina yeah. to seven total rebounds that's insane for missouri that's, that's, a, insane. that's outrageous yeah it's, it's very hard to go up against a team that is that relentless and that dominant on the glass. Because like we've seen, even when you miss a layup, even when you miss a jump shot, it doesn't matter. South Carolina is able to turn that almost into a pass. It's almost where missed shots are like passes for South Carolina. Let me look at the AP top five right now. Both of them, all these teams have superstars, right? You've got Boston, Brink, Mike Sill with their three-point shooting, AZ Fudd is back, Angel Reese is a walking double-double. But these teams also have some unsung heroes, in my opinion. Rebeal with her defensive energy, Hannah Jump can knock down threes, Taylor Thierry is an ultimate athlete, Nika Mule is tough, Alexis Morris facilitates and gets that LSU team going. This top five is extremely exciting. Three undefeateds in the top five. Stanford's dropped a game to South Carolina. That was a fun matchup to watch. We're going to see UConn take on South Carolina, LSU take on South Carolina. Women's basketball right now across the nation. So much fun, so exciting. It's in a beautiful place right now, and so is South Carolina with the lead, trying to put up a little bit more before they go into the locker room, and Camila Cardozo delivers. South Carolina with a 12-0 run over the last two and a half plus minutes. They put up 28 points in this quarter alone. Stretching out that lead as we send it to Kelsey Riggs in the studio with Rebecca Lobo and Christy Winter Scott. are watching the SEC on ESPN back here at Colonial Life Arena South Carolina closed out the first half on a strong run as they stretched out their lead to nearly 20 as we say hello and welcome you back in along with Andrea Carter I'm Tiffany Green and look all the things that South Carolina is good at defense rebounding the centerpiece Aaliyah Boston they all proved to do exactly what we expected them to do. Yeah, in that first half, we saw a little bit of everything from the South Carolina Gamecocks, and we also saw everything from Aaliyah Boston. And some of the things you'll see on a stat sheet, but other things like this right here, this doesn't show up on the stat sheet. The ability to switch onto guards, not one time, not two times, but three times in one possession and not get beat off the dribble. The willingness to set screens for your teammates and get them open for opportunities to score and quick give and goes and decisions making on the offensive end. This was her one paint touch off of the catch, not off of an offensive rebound, and you see how quickly she scored. That's why teams try to take those easy paint touches away from Aaliyah Boston. Defenses are designed to stop Aaliyah Boston, but you can't stop relentless effort and skill. And one of the things that Don Staley told us before the game, embrace it all, right? Embrace the fact that they are sending all these quadruple, double, and triple teams to you. She's adjusted to that and is still adjusting to it, but done a really nice job here tonight, impacting the game in a number of different ways. On the other side, Lauren Hansen 
pace the way for the Tigers with 11 points in that first half. After shooting 50% in the opening quarter, Missouri went cold, especially going into the locker room. We'll see if they can get recharged after the break. And I was impressed with Lauren Hansen. She had 21 points last season against South Carolina in the upset. A ton of confidence from her on the offensive end. Jayla Kelly trying to go with that left hand around Boston. Boston comes up with her sixth rebound of the game, coming back down the floor. Trying to set the screen for Zaya Cooks. Cooks stepping through and finishing off so beautifully. Yes, ma'am. It's just so smooth. The attack, the hesitation. That's what we talk about with her decision making and being intentional. I know exactly what I'm going to do with the basketball. And if the defense jumps in front of me, I'm just going to react to whatever they do and score. Attacking the basket has been something Zaya Cook added to her game more consistently this season. Trying to work over that screen again from Kelly, staying on Lauren Hansen and being able to alter that shot right there. Again, the improvement on the defensive end and the way that she's been impacting that side of the floor. That one blocked by Jayla Kelly. So Boston blocked by Kelly. And a chance for Missouri to try to pick up their first points of the third quarter. Mama Dembele held scoreless in that opening first half. Stolen away by one of the captains, Victoria Saxton, trying to take it coast to coast. Filed on the way up by Dembele. She'll shoot two. This is great defense from one end to the other. Jayla Kelly on one side, but then this is what makes South Carolina tough. Their defensive energy. That's Aaliyah Boston on the ball really shadowing that pass, and then Victoria Saxon able to get in the lane and not just get the seal, but take it all the way down the floor for the foul and the opportunity to hit two free throws. The senior out of Rome, Georgia, who has been the ultimate team player for this group, just finds a way to get the job done. Doesn't necessarily have to have the shine. Low risk, high reward. That's what Don Staley talks about with Bree Beal, with Victoria Saxon. Low risk. You're not risking anything with them on the floor. High reward because of what they bring. They know their role. They completely commit to it. When you talk, Tiffany, about Missouri going cold in that second quarter, that's the tough thing about South Carolina. If they go cold shooting, it doesn't necessarily matter because of the offensive rebounds, because of the defense, the transitions, and the layups. Missouri turns it over, traveling violation, and Robin Pinchton needs to see some of her core group from a season ago. That's returned, and Haley Frank, Lauren Hansen, and Haley Troop to really kind of step things up and lead the charge on the defensive end, the Missouri Tigers. And Haley Frank is trying to get them going. You see South Carolina coming down the court, and Haley Frank is clapping her hands, trying to give energy to this Missouri team. That's an area that has been outside of her comfort zone, being vocal, really trying to fire up her team with her voice. Coach Pinchton said this team, this Missouri team, is very introverted. It's not natural for them to speak up, and she's challenged them to do that. Fletcher thought about it instead. Cook, pull up crossover, no good. And there's Aaliyah Boston again. So there was a stat back in the first half. There were like 10 offensive rebounds to seven total rebounds. That number keeps growing for South Carolina on the offensive boards. In the first half, Aaliyah Boston had five rebounds. Four were offensive. And then how quick of a decision for her to put the ball on the floor one time, see the opening in the defense, and attack. There are post players that get that offensive rebound around that hash mark, maybe freeze, right? They look for their guard. They try to figure out what to do. Aaliyah Boston goes right into attack mode. Stellar player on the interior, also an outstanding rebounder and defender. What makes her so good? Because it always feels like she's in the right place at the right time around the basket to be able to grab the ball. Her basketball IQ. I remember Aaliyah Boston's freshman year. Don Staley described her like an old man playing pickup. Just, just knows. Knows where everybody needs to be, able to talk to everybody, understands the game. It's the angles that she works with. It's the knowledge of what she's capable of. 
her own body control, her poise. There are so many things that make her great, but her poise, her basketball IQ, and the relentlessness that she works with. She's put time in the weight room. She's put time getting in shape, getting strong. Molly Benetti, South Carolina's strength coach, is one of the best in the game at creating this athletic explosion for her team. It's been really fun to watch. Yeah, I think we talked about it a lot last year and the fact that Aaliyah Boston, you say, well, how does she take her game to the next level? It was something that she decided to do personally and saying, hey, let me find a way to reshape and refine my body. Let me work on my conditioning. And she got together with Molly Benetti and she was able to shed pounds and be a more well-conditioned athlete to get ready for that next level. The thing too, you know, Tiff, we see it, we saw it some with Shakira Austin, right? So Shakira Austin, all last season in college basketball, saw double teams, saw triple teams, gets to the WNBA and it's single coverage. So she has confidence to work and score. I remember she did an interview in the post game with Holly Rowe and said, I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for single coverage. I've never seen it before. You're going to see the same thing with Aaliyah Boston. When she goes to the next level, you can't give double and triple teams at the WNBA. Those guards will light you up from the outside. So she'll have a lot of success at that next level as well because she knows the game, she understands the game, and she works. Haley Troop trying to work around Bree Beal again. Outstanding defender. Bringing it back the other way, Zaya Cook. Not good for three. That's okay because Aaliyah Boston corrals another rebound. Nine on the game for Boston. Cook on the take. And again, second and third chance opportunities. Plentiful for South Carolina in this game. Cook trying to create some separation. Leaves it short. It was strong defense by Missouri. It's so hard, we talked about it, to continue to give effort when South Carolina is getting offensive rebound after offensive rebound. Another rebound, but stripped away by Hanson. And that's the type of grittiness and the blue collar type plays and team that Robin Pinchton is proud of. Blocked by Aaliyah Boston, her first block of the game. You know, the South Carolina Gamecocks lead the nation in blocks per game. And Lauren Hansen may think about this one the next time around. All right. We talk about the confidence of Lauren Hansen to go, and Aaliyah Boston ends up getting her with the body, and that is a tough shot to take. All ball at the top, body down low. Give Lauren Hansen credit because she has the confidence to go back in there. If that was me, you wouldn't see me go back in there. <laughs> and that's what we learned about Lauren Hansen last year, right? Not shying away from the moment. You talked about how she played so big against South Carolina, able to knock down the game winner for that historic win for Mizzou a season ago. And, and, and when we asked Robin Pinchton, well, well, tell us a little bit about Lauren Hansen. Oh, yeah, she's confident. Oh, she's, she's never going to shy away from the moment. And that's what you love about Lauren Hansen and her game. The confidence, the chip on her shoulder. She has the ability to score. She's focused more on the defensive side, which this entire Missouri team has really tried to lock in on the defensive end this season and grow in that area. But she has a fearlessness that she plays with. Reminds me a little of my teammate. I played with someone, Alexa Middleton at Tennessee. She went on and transferred to Iowa State. But there's a fearlessness that they play with, and Alexa has had an incredible pro career overseas. Lauren Hansen has the ability to do the same thing. Leah Boston adding to her point total, and she's just one rebound shy of another double-double this season. Sarah Rose Smith over to Haley Troop, and Troop is blocked by Aaliyah Boston, and Boston coming back the other way. The defense of South Carolina so stout inside. Nice pass from Beal to Boston. Defense to offense. Even that last defensive possession, you saw South Carolina denying the wings. Look at Victoria Saxon here, denying Caitlin Gilbert. Zaya Cook is up. 
the defensive energy led to Aaliyah Boston getting the block, and then she comes all the way down the court to score. Tough shot there for Sarah Rose Smith, but it rolls around for the Aussie. Back over to Cook, and Cook is fouled. Dawn Staley talks about the way her team approaches the game and the way they always get back to their habits in a full 40 minutes. They approach the game with a defensive mindset. Defense to offense, and who is the anchor? It's Aaliyah Boston. Get the block shot and work on the other end for two. Are you that somebody? Aaliyah Boston is like, yes, I am that somebody. Her 11th double-double of the season, 71st of her career. She's done so in such an efficient manner. And when you look at where she stands in SEC history and breaking that tie with Tierra McCowan to take third place and sole possession of that for most career double-doubles, Aaliyah Boston is not anybody to be played with. Absolutely not. She's in such great company. Sylvia Fowles, Janet Harris, the impact that those two had on their university, the impact that Aaliyah Boston is having on her university. It's just so much fun to watch because a double-double is not easy to get. People just watch Aaliyah Boston and think it might be easy. Watch Angel Reese and think it's easy. It's hard. It takes a lot of work, especially, again, we go back to when defenses are designed to keep you from having success. We talked to Dawn Staley. She said, rarely if ever do they as a coaching staff scout a team and say, okay, we're going to see that defense. Okay, that team is going to play the defense we're watching against us. It doesn't happen. Right. Teams scheme defensively for South Carolina specifically. So you never know what you're going to get. But there, Avery Conkey, who is... One of the new faces on this roster, a hometown product out of Columbia, Missouri, gets her first two points. And Coach Pension speaks very highly of Avery Kroenke. High ceiling, said she has one of the highest motors I've ever coached. Talking, energy, nonstop. Now she said if Sophie Cunningham watches this, just know that Sophie still takes the kick. No one has as high of a motor as Sophie Cunningham, but a lot of high praise for Avery Kroenke and her ceiling and her future at Missouri. I was going to say the loads of potential. Robin Pinchton equated that to Sophie Cunningham and yep. the success that she has both here at Mizzou and now in the WNBA with the Phoenix Mercury. Kroenke also kind of having that same family legacy as well at the university. And there's still so much you have to learn as a freshman coming into the SEC, especially with Missouri and the offense they run, the nuances of the game, understanding when to push, when to pull out, don't get too deep. Like, those little nuances come, but that effort and energy that Conkey plays with, Robin Pinchton really likes. Nice find to Sarah Rose Smith. Can't finish around the rim, but remember for this Missouri team, a number number of new faces some players moved out new players came on in and that's the new trend of college sports all together ashton judd blocked that one 24 seconds left on the shot clock fletcher inbounds it you, you talk about the influx of players as Camilla Cardoso just absolutely creates her own space through the defense to score. Look at the wide base that she seals with, and Sarah Rose Smith gets underneath Camilla Cardoso. Someone might see that and say, oh, that's a foul on Camilla Cardoso. No, you can't get underneath someone. You have to give them their own space and freedom of movement to work. But you talked about players in players out asia blackwell a huge piece for this missouri program the last few years she's at baylor ladasia williams who played in this matchup in the upset had a huge game she's at lsu now so a couple of key pieces that missouri doesn't have they still have a huge piece of their core and that's why coach pinchin has talked about this group has been very fun for her this season Ashton Judd, a show me state over to Sarah Rose Smith. Wow, 
Wow, what a tough pass inside to Cordozo. Cordozo is probably one of the few people that could actually catch that one. <laughs> An incredible pass and give Brie Beal a lot of credit today. Six assists so far as she's coming down the court in transition. Her eyes are up. She's looking for her teammates. The crowd gives Zaya Cook a big round of applause as she goes to the bench. Zaya Cook's defensive energy on Lauren Hansen. High level tonight. Lining it up and knocking it down. The 2022 McDonald's All-American and South Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year and Ashlyn Watkins. Foul whistled against South Carolina. And Cardozo, the guilty party. Give Sarah Rose Smith credit. She's been attacking the basket. Had a nice attack on Aaliyah Boston. And that's what Coach Pinchin wants to see, right? The grittiness, the fearlessness. Down by 32 points, but what energy are you bringing? What are you playing with? Because you have to think, whatever they do against South Carolina today, they can use moving forward. If they start to make a comeback, they start to make a push, they cut into this lead, put good things on tape, play hard, create those habits today that will carry you through SEC play. Watkins trying to figure out what to do and bailed out with a whistle. Ashlyn Watkins going to the free throw line. And knocks down the first of two. What did you say earlier in this ball game, Drea? Coach Daly feels like she can do more. She can give more. Like she's got more in the tank. She calls herself a gamer, right? But you, you can't just be a gamer at this level. You can't just be a gamer at South Carolina. You have to be a practicer. I've been to some of South Carolina's practices. The expectations are high at practice. All out energy, attention to detail, the little things matter. So when you talk about Watkins creating those habits in practice and then being a huge X factor on the bench, she has elite athleticism, high basketball IQ, according to Don Staley. She can be big for this Gamecocks team moving forward. Hansen kicks it out to Troop. Around to Sarah Rose Smith, takes a dribble, free throw line, pops in and out. A little tie up there with Kroenke and Fletcher. This is the energy that Robin Pinchon was talking about. Again, Sarah Rose Smith with a nice offensive move. I like the mentality she's playing with. And Kroenke skying in for the rebound. Give Kiara Fletcher credit for staying strong with the basketball. Troop working on Fletcher. Bounce pass over to Hanson, and Hanson is fouled. And a foul by Raven Johnson. Again, Missouri's offense going to work. Haley True, Lauren Hanson play so well off of each other, and that's what Coach Pinchton wants. Draw the defense, get two to come to you, and then find your teammates, cut around each other. That's what the Missouri offense is built off of. Still so impressed with Raven Johnson, her contributions off the bench, coming in, running the team. Want to be careful picking the ball up right at the half court line, but she has played a great basketball game so far. Pushing in transition, playing with high energy, looking to score. Cardoso. Off the mark from the elbow jumper. Streaking down the floor with Sarah Rose Smith pushing the pace intensely. Are the Tigers going inside the handoff? Tough catch in position and the turnover. Yeah. It's a foul on Lauren Hansen checking Camilla Cardoso as she's running down the court. We saw just how. 
physical this ball game was to start, and this is the, the grind, the gauntlet that you hear coaches talk about within the Southeastern Conference, just how difficult it is each game because everyone is bodying up, bringing their best shot. And you see it in the post, you see it on the perimeter, it's in the half court, it's in transition. This has been a very physical game, but that's why it's so important for Don Staley to emphasize to her post players, just run the floor. You're gonna end up drawing fouls when you're trying to post up, when you're trying to run the floor, because people are going to try and keep you off of your game and stop you from doing that. And it's an opportunity to put points on the board at the free throw line. Hanson inside, Brie Beal with the block. And look at her hustle up the floor. They try to reward her back the other way. Tough position to catch. She's looking to attack, kicks out. Watkins puts it on the floor and an offensive foul called against the freshman. And that's what Haley Frank does. Haley Frank drew two offensive fouls last season against South Carolina in the first quarter and really set the tone defensively for Missouri. But for Don Staley and Ashton Watkins, you like the aggressiveness. You want her to be aggressive, play strong in the paint. And a tough third quarter for Missouri as South Carolina keeps on building their lead. On the other side, we will remember a true American hero, a transformational leader, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on the other side. Today, college basketball honors Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a civil rights activist who gave a pivotal speech nearly 60 years ago this coming August. I have a dream from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and fought to end segregation in this country, both the work that he did as a leader and those of that generation to allow for Andrea and I and for this game that you're enjoying to be played amongst all brothers and sisters is a true privilege and an honor. And I know that a lot of people oftentimes put up Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. quotes across Twitter. And those ideals are great, but it's even better when we're able to put them into practice, Jordan. Absolutely. It is so much better being here with you, having these opportunities to see these great athletes play. When you talk about dreaming, Martin Luther King had a dream. Don Staley talks about being a dream merchant for young people, the ability to see bigger and see beyond and see better and then work for it is it's truly special. He was a drum major for justice and you think about the voices of today who continue to fight as Mama Dembele with the bucket. Don Staley, one of those speaking out on social justice issues, trying to fight for equality in pay between men and women within the sport. And Bree Hall knocking down the three-pointer. Five made from downtown today, right around their average, Drea. And that's the thing about South Carolina. People always are like, well, they don't hit very many threes. They also don't allow their opponents to hit very many threes. So South Carolina, if they can knock me. down four or five me, a game. I don't see ISO. I don't have an ISO. I just... Four or five a game, that's, that's great for them, and that's right where they need to be because they don't allow many threes for their opponents either. Well, scoring, one of those things that have been hard to come by for Missouri in SEC play. That's one of the things that Robin Pinchton talked about because of the great defense. And then Haley yeah. Troop drawing another charge there. But the, the defense that we've seen played throughout this league has made it difficult. You go back to that stretch of play against Arkansas when they miss. 23 consecutive shots. Cold spells like that hurt you. And when you're playing against 
high-powered offenses like Mike Neighbors, Razorbacks, or like very good defensive teams in Don Staley's Gamecocks. It's one of the things that you have to go back and try to retool. Dembele with a clear path to the basket on the take and the bucket. That's one thing when you talk about shooting the basketball, so big for this Missouri team, being able to knock down threes, knock down jump shots, and work their offense. It's huge because unlike South Carolina, they're not going to create a ton of turnovers and score points off turnovers or dominate the boards. For South Carolina, if they have a cold shooting night, there are days where it doesn't matter. Most of the time, all season this season, we've seen it does not matter because they score points in other ways. Six seconds to go on the shot clock, and Haley Frank eyes down the three, and the first three-pointer of the second half for Mizzou. And with the lineup that's in, think about who's in. Raven Johnson, Bree Hall, Camilla Cardoza, you've got Freshman and Watkins, Letitia Me here. Don Staley is going to challenge this group to play tough, to play strong against Missouri, and to play smart. Well, how many times have we seen them go inside to Camila Cardozo this time Haley Frank once more falling to the floor drawing that contact and that's one thing that you have to be aware of when you talk about playing smart knowing Haley Frank is going to set up for the charge and Camila Cardozo right after said that's my bad she knows Aaliyah Boston back into the ball game, and what does she do? Block it. Such a high point on her block shots. Great timing, great anticipation. You see Talasia Cooper in the game for South Carolina. Freshman, another player with an opportunity, and Don Staley said, to impact this team. Be a spark on the bench. If you're Talasia Cooper right now, with this lead, just play as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. Play as hard as you can, all out, relentless effort, and have fun out there. This is an opportunity to show what you can bring to this team because South Carolina might need her down the stretch. The recruiting for Dawn Staley has been superb. Her and her staff have gone out and brought in number one and number two classes. That number one class of Boston and Cook and Ami here and company. And there's Watkins on the putback. And, and I asked her, I said, okay, well, is there anything then in, that intrigues you about this team? Because you've got superstars. You've got McDonald's All-Americans. You have all these accolades for players individually. She said, no, not really. Why? Because I'm so comfortable with my team. I love the fact that everyone comes in understanding that you just want to win at the end of the day. doesn't mean you're going to get all the playing time in the world, but if you're willing to sacrifice some of the time so that bodies can get on the floor and everybody can get their experience and whoever can make the impact on the floor, that's who needs to be out there for us. And that's important. You talk about the number one recruiting classes. They come in and sometimes don't get a lot of minutes. You have to have an unselfish mindset. Victoria Saxton sets a great example of that. Camila Cardoso is playing really well. Her numbers are up. Her minutes are up. Victoria Saxton's are down a little bit. But it's whatever the team needs to win, that unselfish mindset, really important for this South Carolina team to have success. And what does it equate to? Dominance. 11 straight 20-win seasons reached for the last seven Final Fours, winning the national championship in 2017 and again last year. What an out-of-bounds play by South Carolina. Letitia Me here cuts right across the face right across the baseline, gets the pass, puts it in. Dembele, pass out of bounds. Well, Colonial Life Arena has been treated to fantastic play from their home team, South Carolina, up big with 4.56 remaining in the game.
get ready for our Super Tuesday doubleheader starting with the Sunflower Showdown as number two Kansas and the Manhattan to take on 11th ranked Kansas State at 7 Eastern. Then Oscar Sheepway and Kentucky will welcome Georgia to rub both games right here on ESPN. But coming up later this afternoon right here, the second game of this women's basketball doubleheader, the Tobacco Road rivalry. It's NC State and North Carolina, both ranked in the top 25. Wolfpack trying to bounce back from that game against Florida State this past Thursday. Meanwhile, how about Deja Kelly and what she's done for the Tar Heels this season, averaging better than 17 points a game. I like Deja Kelly's game a lot. Her ability to get to the rim, attack the basket, play strong and finish and lead that Tar Heel team. Second chance opportunities, the theme throughout this game, and it's Chloe Pitts who's able to get her first points of the game. Chloe Pitts, the freshman out of Oviedo, Florida. Young stars for South Carolina. When you think about the future of this program and where it's going, Chloe Kitts comes early. She could be in high school right now. Yeah. She could be finishing her high school season, but is here learning, growing. Don Saley talked about having the expectation of some of these young players contributing to this team. And she said, Chloe should be contributing to her high school team, but she's willing to come here and learn and get a head start. Kids who had just two minutes in our last game, but making her minutes count here. Going to work on the glass. Pursuing the basketball, working just to get in position to make the play. But you have to think, she watches her teammates do it. She watches Aaliyah Boston do it. She watches Camilla Cardoso, Victoria Saxon. She sees it and probably feels it in practice every single day. And it starts to become something that you take on as well. Caitlin Gilbert, no good. And already Kitts coming into this ball game. Three quick rebounds for Chloe, the number 17th ranked player. In the class of 2023. And I'll say this, Lauren Hansen, who took a hard fall out of the ball game, but she gave it everything that she had in this one. She's I mean, Incredibly tough, and, and really Missouri did. Haley Frank taking charges, Lauren Hansen attacking. I really appreciated Sarah Rose Smith and the way she attacked the basket at times. Caitlin Gilbert had good moments. There are moments that this Missouri team can build on, especially their offensive execution in the first half. The tough thing about South Carolina is it's a full 40 minutes. You have to give so much energy to defend them on one end that running your offense on the other end every possession with crispness and hard cuts it's really hard to do we haven't seen a team have success doing it so far this season think about the teams that had moments ucla cut had a lead on south carolina stanford had a lead on south carolina mississippi state fought hard georgia fought hard kentucky with a 10-point lead at one point but it's a full 40-minute game against this gamecock team stolen away on the inbound by chloe kitts Back the other way, L.A. Leticia Ami here. Finds Bree Hall, corner pocket three, just short. Ashlyn Watkins, who has 11 points on the day, she can add to that total. Got a couple of free throws upcoming. Well, some games you want to look out for on South Carolina's schedule. A busy February for sure. They go on the road to stores to take on the Husky, a rematch of last year's championship game. That one is already sold out, then LSU comes here as the Tigers who have played terrific. And then did I see another team on there that looked familiar? You did. Tennessee. Tennessee <laughs> Lady Vols? You did. And Tennessee playing extremely well, able to put the pieces together. Unfortunate that Tamari Key will miss the season. But give Tennessee credit for being able to figure out how to have success once they learned that she wasn't going to be back on the floor. It'll LSU be, playing great basketball as well. And it'll be interesting to see which team is left standing as the undefeated. Like, you know, when we get to that point of the season. Or will any of them be undefeated? Or will any of them, yeah. Chasing down the loose ball. Amir here over to Kitts.
Coach Pinched and giving some of her younger players opportunities as well. See Ashton Judd there with the rebound. She's a player that Coach Pinchon is very excited about. Plays hard, does the little things. That's Kroenke again with the spin around, turn around, layup in transition. Coach Pinchon is excited about this group, excited about the young players that she has at Missouri as well. Completely outmatched by South Carolina today, but we did see fight from the Tigers. And a group she feels like she can build with for the remainder of the season, saying, hey, look, I absolutely love this group. Well, this Thursday night's women's double header on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, highlighted by the top teams in the conference. Number one, South Carolina, going to Nashville to take on Vanderbilt, followed by Angel Reese, and number five, LSU, hosting Arkansas at the Maravich Center. Kitts driving baseline, kicks it out. Cooper taking it to the hoop. The attack rolls off. A foul called against Talasia Cooper. So that's the great news, right? So we'll get a chance to see South Carolina and LSU in action later this week. That is the most excellent news. <laughs> what a, we were talking in studio, it was me, Steffi Sorensen, Alyssa Lang, about wanting to watch Aaliyah Boston and Angel Reese, just, just a one-on-one -on -one matchup like two or three times. I know yeah. teams are going to send help. I know they're going to want that to happen. But if, if the coaches could just agree, like, hey, can we let them play one-on-one -on -one in the paint a couple of times? Because I really want to see it. What a fun matchup. And we saw a glimpse of it. You know, Angel Reese was at Maryland last season. They face South Carolina. We'd love to see it again. Again, Drea. Now, when you look across the country, these are the top three teams, the only three teams that have unblemished records this season, one, three, and five in the top 25. Ohio State playing some outstanding basketball. Diamond Miller looks amazing. Ohio, Diamond Miller is great at Maryland. Ohio State's ability to knock down threes. We've got superstars all across the board. You talk about Taylor yeah. Mike Sell at Ohio State, Diamond Miller at Maryland, Angel Reese at LSU, Aaliyah Boston at South Carolina. We showed some of those superstars in a beautiful graphic that was created by our team. Indeed, indeed. And I, I appreciate the cover partner, too, the brain fart that happened just you. then. I'm yeah, here for no, you. No. I'm just trying to be a good You're, teammate. Yeah, you, you are. Know? Excuse me. You are. I also, hold, speaking, hold speaking of good teammates, Maxine O'Feely made the Zaya Cook breakdown, and it was it was fire. Before this game ends, I want to give credit to our teammate Maxine. She's a PA for us. She was a hooper as well. And fire breakdown. We appreciate it. I love it. Always spreading love. Letitia Ami here locked up after that block with Michael Lifkam. The Zaya Cook breakdown was as good as that block by mm. Letitia Ami here. Mm. I appreciate the analysis, partner, that, you know on what? the breakdown, okay? Got to learn folks at home, teaching them a little something, something. Just, just enjoy this game. It's so much fun to watch because there's so many little things that go into having success on the court, whether it's Missouri executing on the offensive end with their off-ball screen. South Carolina executing switches right here on the defensive end. This game is fun. This game is not easy. And it's a team game. It's so much fun. No upsets this time around for Missouri. 371 days ago to now. And they avenge their loss from last season. 21 straight SEC regular season wins for South Carolina. And they're stretching out their current active win streak to 24 with an 81 to 50 decision over Missouri. And they got it done with sticking to what they know in their habits. 23 offensive rebounds for 29 points. Absolutely incredible effort for South Carolina showing up today. We'll talk to one of the stars of today's game, Aaliyah Boston, when we come back to Columbia.
Thanks for watching the SEC on ESPN and Aaliyah Boston, the reigning national player of the year. We talked about the impact that she has on this game. Another double-double, 11th of the season, 20 points, 10 rebounds, and a very efficient 20 minutes on the floor. She joins us now along with Andrea Carter. And when you came over and looked at the stat sheet, how would you summarize your game? You said, oh, yeah, I did well here, I did well here, but there was one particular area you cared about the most. My free throws. I went eight for eight, which is good. We've been practicing a lot of free throws after the game, so I was very happy to not miss one tonight. And then you also circled the oh, yeah. goose egg for turnovers. Yes. Last game I had three, so that wasn't my best, but today was good. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about today was good, Aaliyah, your offensive rebounds, the way that you're able to put those in, finish through the and ones, talk a little bit about the physicality of this game and how you're still able to have success and finish inside yeah I mean Missouri is going to be physical no matter who they play no matter what they're going to be physical and we knew that and we prepped for that but I think the flow of our offense is what helped me to be as successful as I was tonight just because we're moving the ball and so I was being put in positions that were beneficial to me and the team and so it's just really good the combination of you and Zaya Cook have been dynamic, but when you think about the depth that's been created with some of the younger players, you know, what excites you most just going through the rest of the season with some of those young players who've getting that experience? Everything really excites me because they come in and we don't miss a step. There's no beat, uh, nothing falls off because they're ready, and I think that's so important because no matter who comes off the bench or when, they're always ready to go because we prep and we practice and they know that they're ready for it. Well, Tiff mentioned Zaya Cook, and we talked all game about her efficiency and the way that she is playing and how important that is for this team. You've been with her since your freshman year. Where have you seen her grow the most this season? I mean, all around, really. I think her mental, I think she's in a great spot mentally. She just knows that she wants. She put in all the work in the summer, and it's just been wonderful. And she's shooting the heck out the ball. Like, really, I think it's just opening up everything and everyone because everybody has there's so much attention because oh shoot she's shooting almost 40 percent from the three like she is unstoppable and i know you've got like a coach's mindset don staley said you see the game so well where do you see this team getting even better in the future because y'all haven't peaked yet um, I would just say a little bit more communication defensively. I think even tonight there were some little confusions on the screen. One happened with me too, so just working on that. But I really think that we're in a good spot right now and we're just going to continue to grow. Well, switching on screens, guarding, defending, rebounding, picking up points. Aaliyah Boston can do it all, remaining perfect on the season. The South Carolina Gamecocks move to 18-0. and 0. As we say so long from Columbia, South Carolina, for Andrea Carter, I'm Tiffany Green. Now let's send it over to the studio with Kelsey Riggs. For now, we out. <laughs>